right, good morning everyone. I am so excited to be here. When I get the opportunity to talk about something that I love, then I think it comes from my heart, definitely. It comes from a place that is of importance to me. I hope that whatever I share with you today is something that you can take. You can take some nuggets. I can help water some seeds that have already been planted or maybe even plant some seeds. So let's get started. A little about me. So I just have a few little pictures. Um, so first and foremost, Jesus Christ is the center of my life. I am sure that we have that in common. And so most everything I approach in life is from that point. I seek his face, even as I think about my journey to become an educator. That was his idea for me. I was fighting for a while. I was like, no, Jesus, no. Not a teacher, but um, yeah. Then there's uh, my family. So as Pastor Lee mentioned, I'm married to Richard, and we, this year we will celebrate 20 years of being married. And we have three kids. So Zed is studying at UTA, and he is a senior. And Zoe is our aspiring ballerina. She's 12. This year we've done a little different uh, with her education. We're doing like a quasi homeschool this year to facilitate her dance aspirations because she wanted to add dance in the morning. So then it's like, okay, we're gonna do something a little different. So she goes to school two days a week and then we homeschool three days when outside of her dance hours. So that's been interesting as well. Definitely a different area for us. And then we have Luke who is, um, as he coins, the real Pastor Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll let him speak that over himself. Um, when he was two, and you know, people say different things about two-year-olds, I would just say, well, this is what leadership looks like when you're two. You know, there's a terrific age. You know, I didn't want to speak anything otherwise. Yeah. So <laughs> he's, he's grown to, um, to love baseball, and so we thought he was going to be playing baseball this morning, but the, the weather said otherwise. And so then Daddy is not on baseball duty now, but now on ballet duty. So in a little bit, he'll take Zoe to her ballet class. Um, there's a picture of my island home. Uh, the more I talk, the more you'll uh, hear my accent, I'm sure. The more comfortable I become, probably the stronger the accent will come out. Um, it's funny because, do you know, we do a little bit of code switching. I do some modifications so that people can understand. I've been in the U.S. long enough to know some things I have to say a little differently so that people don't ask questions. But, <laughs> yeah, but probably the more time we spend together, you'll hear a little more of my accent. Maybe you, maybe not. Um, and then on purpose. Um, I was just asked a little while ago, where do I teach? So I am an educator. Um, by profession and by calling. And what I've decided to do recently as a result of hearing the hearts of my students over the years is to start a nonprofit. Uh, and a lot of times in your position as an educator, you become a confidant. That as well. uh, my students would confide in me often was their insecurities about their bodies. Uh, when I taught kindergarten, I had a hug, and in private school, yeah, that's great, you know, you can hug all day. It's like, thank you for paying me in hugs. I love this. This is my, one of my love languages, physical touch. So I was getting paid with hugs, and this little girl, she hugged me, and she said, Mrs. Scott, you don't have a tummy. My mommy has a tummy. And I'm thinking, wow, at five. <laughs> We're not just thinking about this hug, we're thinking about Mrs. Scott's tummy, or lack thereof, in her mind. Fast forward to teaching second grade. Little girl comes to me, she's only oh, going on a cruise. I said, that's wonderful. She said, I've got to lose some weight. So I said, is that what mommy said? Yes, mommy said that. I said, well, you tell mommy that mommy is perfect the way that she is, and so are you, and neither one of you have to lose weight. High school, 
teaching high school. One little girl, she wanted to eat lunch with me for all week she was sitting with me. And I noticed every day she had a salad. I said, okay, so I'm noticing you're eating a lot of salads. Do you have a goal? And she said, well, I figure if I lose some weight, I might stand a better chance of getting an ax to the prom. And I said, well, let me tell you, you are beautiful on the inside and on the outside. And if someone doesn't see that like I see it, they are not worth your time. Maybe you need a different date. Amen. So these were all girls. But then I had a male student who came to me, a 10th grader, and he was saying his, his uh, ethnicity is Nigerian. So his mother was, you know, well endowed on the backside, right? So he said, it's my mother's reason, uh, my mother's fault that I have this big butt. If I can say butt, personally. And so he said, I'm going to lose some weight. And I said, well, you know what? You need to make sure that you are eating well, eating good foods, you're drinking water, and you have a good exercise program. And so then you're going to be the best version of you. And um, so I just watch him throughout the school year. It's like, is that all you're having for lunch? You know, yes, ma'am. Towards the end of the school year, he came to me and he said, no, his mom hadn't bought him new clothes. He was still wearing the same pants from the beginning of the school year, but he had dropped a lot of sizes this school year. And he came to me in his baggy pants, and he said, I thought I would feel different, but I still feel the same on the inside. So he had lost so much weight, but he still felt the emptiness inside. So I shared all of that to tell you why I'm not in the classroom anymore, but I'm pursuing this nonprofit. And next week, I'll be, I'll be uh, sending my proposals to a few ISDs so that in the fall, I'll be doing workshops on positive body image. So that's just a little bit about me. Okay. Okay, so my journey to education. Uh, so I didn't grow up like some others and had their dolls and their teddy bears lined up and had a little chalkboard and was teaching and harassing all the neighborhood children. You're going to come and we're going to play school. That wasn't me. My aspirations were <laughs> very different. Uh, admittedly, um, my country is uh, one of the leading offshore jurisdictions uh, for insurance and for finance. So you grow up and you see uh, people who are uh, what you would deem successful are working in the finance industry. Um, they are actuaries, they are accountants, they are portfolio managers. And so I thought that was my track. Um, I was always very good in math, and it seemed like a logical uh, trajectory for me. So I decided I was going to study um, accounting, and then changed my major halfway through, but I had a great um, two years of accounting, changed to business uh, administration, international business, because I figured one day my country might be independent, and we were gonna, I'm going to need this skill set with international business. So I had my trajectory uh, lined up. But if I go back a little bit, I remember when I was in high school, and my family has always been a praying family, and my, my mom has always taught me to pray. And uh, this was way back before the internet, of course. So while I was thinking about universities, I got catalogs from different universities to consider what programs they had, you know, what would be a great fit for me when I decide to study. And I had a, I remember I had a catalog from Old Roberts University. And I sat on my, I remember my mint green comforter, sitting on that comforter. And I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to study? And that catalog kept opening up to education. I was like, the devil is a liar. 
<laughs> I'm not going to be broke. Oh my gosh. No, I'm not going to be a teacher. Teachers are unappreciated and underpaid. I know enough at, you know, 15 and 16 that that's not the, the world I'm going. You know, that book kept opening up to education and I was like, nope. Maybe it's stuck because it's open so many times. It's almost like I've earmarked this section, I put that book down. So I went and I pursued my degree in business. And I was, I've always been a good student, so I did well in business. So I'm like, okay, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. I do well in business. So I would, and I think about all of the callings that God was whispering and then shouting to me along the way and I was like okay I'm not a slow learner but I feel like I am because you keep telling me and I'm not listening but I would think about when I would when I was taking calculus and I would be in the class and I would get it from the teacher and then I would go to the library to study and then I would try and leave the library and then people from my class they'd say Shanika you're not leaving yet, are you? Come over here. We're doing this calculus, and we know you can explain it to us. So I would have groups that I would tutor with calculus. And there was a, an organization called Junior Achievement. Um, I didn't know if you were familiar with it. Um, so I was all about my future and planning it, and I needed to be well-rounded on my resume. I knew that I need to have some community service when I'm applying for, you know, that sort of internship or job. They're going to choose me because I'm well-rounded. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to volunteer with Junior Achievement. So I volunteered teaching business basics. So I would go to the fifth graders and I would teach them about unit production versus mass production, all business stuff, right? Because I'm a business person. So what I didn't realize, you were teaching, right? So I, we would take the pens apart, and so I would line them up, and then we would take, okay, you take this part of the pen, pass it to this one, you take this part of the pen, pass it to this one, or you take all of the parts of the pen, and you make a whole pen. So unit versus mass production. And so I thought, this is just business. This is not teaching, right? And then I would, when I, I think about also when I was um, a professional working in finance. And so I would get off of my work day and I would, I had a whole bunch of different volunteer things I did over the years. I used to teach at our men's prison. Uh, whatever they needed, I was that person. So if someone needed a course, a math course, so that they can do an electrical course, I was that person. If they wanted to work on their GED, I was that person. If they wanted to, whatever, whatever the inmates needed, Shalika can teach them, okay? So I would have a gamut. I would notice when they would get out of prison, you know, sometimes you have, you have the education when you're working in, the, in, in, um, in that uh, arena, not always make eye contact with people and stuff, right? Um, so when I would be walking down the street, I'd hear, Miss Teacher, Miss Teacher. <laughs> I knew exactly where that person knew me from, from my teaching at prison. I would volunteer at the adult education program. I would, at the end of my business day, you know, after managing investments, investment portfolios, I'd go and I'd teach somebody to read. <laughs> I, I, then I, I learned how to speak Spanish fluently. So then that was another area. After my business day, I would teach at a local language school. I'm just, but I'm teaching Spanish, and Spanish is going to help me to liaise with my Latin American emerging market clients, right? Yes, so I thought, right? So this is my whole journey to being a teacher. So when I went, I went to Spain for six months to increase my learning in Spanish. And of course, when I got to a certain aptitude, I switched over to business Spanish. You know, I'm gonna get that certification, put that on my resume. 
And when I got back to Bermuda, I said, you know what, I'm not going to jump at the first job. I want to do something a little more interpersonal rather than, you know, increasing someone's portfolio and sitting behind this computer screen, you know, in the afternoons, which was like the worst thing for me. I love talking to the brokers in the morning, but in the afternoons when I had to do all my crunching, I didn't, ha I didn't like that too much. So I need something a little more interpersonal. So I'm not going to take the fresh oil. I know what I'll do. I could get a couple hundred dollars a day as a substitute teacher. This seems, you know, you know like a good role. I'm going to do this while I'm circulating my resume. So all is set up, right? So then this principal, uh, she comes to me and she's like, I'm about to lose my Spanish teacher. Are you interested? I know you speak Spanish. I said, no, 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 this is just what I'm doing in the interim. <laughs> she said, well, pray about it. And I said, well, it's actually a good time to pray because my church is doing a, a fast this month. <laughs> so I will pray. And the Holy Spirit, of course, said, you are a teacher. Take the job. And I'm like, but I get a bonus. I get this salary. Teachers don't make much money. I'm going to take a pay cut. I'm not going to get my bonus. I'm not going to get my gym membership. I'm not going to get my free breakfast, my free lunch. You know, all these things. I was like, Lord, are you serious? <laughs> yes, I'm serious. So yes, that was probably, gosh, I, I, I can't even do the math um, before, before I had kids. Um, yeah. So that is my journey to being an educator. Um, maybe some of you aren't as hard-headed as I was. Maybe you'll answer the call in whatever capacity he calls you to and not, you know, have to have God constantly knock. I'm, I'm thankful that he didn't stop knocking, you know, because a lot of times we talk about like when, um, you know, not necessarily the same vein, but being given over to a reprobate mind. I thank God that I wasn't given over to a reprobate mind and I was unhappily pursuing finance with a six-figure income and a nice bank account, but not fulfilling my calling and my purpose. Amen. And so I can safely say that right now I am fulfilling my call and my purpose. And I want us to, um, to understand that all of us at some point, at varying levels, may be called to teach, to educate. It may not be something that you do full time, but something that you are privileged to do on occasion. So as we approach the content, I want you to have an open mind that Lord, whenever, the, the word says that we should be ready in season and out. So maybe I'm getting this preparation for something that is coming in the future. Or maybe I'm already in the capacity where I could use this skill set to benefit the people that I'm being called to reach. So I just, um, I wanted to find out, I wanted to, I'm looking at the clock and we, I think we probably have enough time to do it. But I'm going to give you a, a note card. And I'm very curious about this because one, I don't know your names yet. You're going to tell me shortly. And then also, I want to know if you feel a calling to instruct or educate, if you are operating in that capacity now or have done so in the past. So on this note card, you're going to write your name. And if you feel like there's been a past, present, or future calling to educate or instruct, and what is it? So I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Yes. Your pastor, is that part of instructing? Yes, definitely. Calling? Yes. Yes. There's only one question. Yes. So two things, your name and your area of calling to instruct and or teach.
And when you're done, if you just put your pen down, I'll know that you're finished writing, you're ready. Okay, so that's most everyone, it looks like. So I'm going to get you guys to share. We're not going to, I'm certain we won't get through everybody um, within this half hour, but we will get through everybody before you leave today. So if you don't go this time, then you'll get a chance to share before we leave. Okay, so I have in my hand this bowl. My husband mentioned to me earlier this week, I, I threw something, uh, there was some, a package for him, and it was outside the house. So while I was leaving, I was like, oh, there's a package. Um, and the, the FedEx lady just, or UPS, she just gave it to me right in the car. Do you want to come out and get it? So it was raining, so I took the package and I threw it. And he was like, you throw it like a girl. <laughs> well, I am a girl. So, yes. I will throw this bowl like a girl, proudly, because I'm a girl. Uh, yes, my husband is a sports enthusiast and went to university on a soccer scholarship and, you know, sports is his thing, not mine. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw this bowl like a girl to someone and when you get the bowl, then you're going to stand and share your name and your calling that you've written down, okay? And then you'll find someone else and you're gonna throw like a girl or a guy <laughs> and let them share, tocate. So I'm gonna touch you, your turn, okay? All right. <laughs> she said, no. <laughs> Do you know what that reminds me of? Like at most wedding receptions, and she's like, no, I don't want that bouquet. To. <laughs> Okay, thank you for sharing, Mariah. Okay, I, I digress, but I'm going to say it out loud. Yeah, I know a lot of times you have to make word associations, but um, to remember names, and especially in the teaching profession. But Mariah, I'll tell you what my word association is for you. I have a little jingle, I'll call it a jingle, in my head. Me and Mariah go back like babies and pacifiers. <laughs> that was like a rap from way back then. So when I see Mariah, that's what's in my mind. <laughs> okay, so Mariah, you're going to throw it to someone. Everyone's 
<laughs> Good morning. But, um, you could jingle back to your seat. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm going to let you hold on to the globe um, for just a moment. We're going to play a quick game. Okay, so if you have a Bible, an electronic Bible of some sort, I'm going to get you to come and you're going to start at this, what is it say, first rate. So we're going to have a crowd around first rate. I'm going to go over the uh, scripture uh, verses that are in your study guide. And the way that we're going to do it is I will give you the book and the chapter I will start to read the verse, and you, whoever figures out what verse it is, the numeric number of the verse, you shout it out. Whoever does that correctly and, and first will advance to the next. We'll call that a little encouragement tile. So they go all the way around. We'll see who gets the closest to this little podium. Okay, so does everyone? Sorry, no, you can't take your study guide because your study guide has the chapter and verse <laughs> reference. I'm sure you have a nice Bible app on that cell phone. <laughs> okay, so if everyone will take their um, old school Bible or handheld device, open up your Bible app, you're going to come to the back and you're going to listen for whatever chapter I am reading from and you're going to shout out the verse. So everyone needs to come back and come back here and start. Okay, so this will be the most crowded it will be over here to start. And then people will start to advance. Is it team? No. Every man, woman, for his or herself. Okay, so um, everyone start here. First person will come to this one, okay? So you get it correctly, you advance, okay? We'll see how far you progress. Okay, so I am reading from Proverbs chapter 9. You tell me what verse. Give instruction to a wise man. Nine. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Yes? Is it clear, the instruction? Yes. Okay. I'm reading from Hosea 4. My people are destroyed. Six. Six. Finance and health. <laughs> Proverbs 22, train up a child in the way, six, that was the loudest, yes. <laughs> so you might be at um, the same time as someone, but if you are louder, that bodes well as well. Okay, Colossians 3, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms 16, blue jacket. Good job. Okay, Proverbs 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son. Yes. <laughs> okay, we've got a, a five-way tie. Proverbs 18. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the heir of 15, finance and health. <laughs> okay, James 1. If any of you lacks wisdom, five. five. Mr. Fort Worth, ISD. <laughs> James 3, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. 
My brethren, one. Very good. It was one. Yes. Yes. Sorry? Is it? New King James? Yeah. Okay. Proverbs 23. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to word 12. Finance and health. Ah. <laughs> Don't shrink breath. They should be back. <laughs> Second Timothy three. All scripture is given sixteen. Fort Worth ISD. Okay, have a tie. Proverbs two. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge six. Yes. Okay, Proverbs 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding is to be chosen rather. 16, finance and health. Yes. There you go. To, to be rock. You're over there to be rock. Okay, Proverbs 9, 10. I told you that. Yes. <laughs> Proverbs 1. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But seven. Mi gente de mi país. That's my people from my country. Okay, Proverbs 4. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. 13. Proverbs 4. Hear my children, the instruction. One. I have red shirt back there. Oh, no, that's it. Oh, that was Mariah. Okay. Second Peter 1. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge. Six. Five. 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 <laughs> Okay, Luke 6, a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly 40. Okay. Tenemos un ganador. So we have a winner. Se llama. So he is health and fitness. <laughs> Feliz Adonis. Congratulations. Okay. We, for the next five minutes, we're going to um, is Sister Mildred. Yes? yes? Yes. Okay. Sister Mildred, you are going to throw the ball to the next willing participant.